Hi everyone, my name is Annika. Um, thanks for joining today. Today I'm going to walk us through a sample of Cars Passage. And today we're really going to be focusing on the strategy of making a mini outline as we go through our Cars Passages. And what that means is basically every single time we read a paragraph, we're going to pause and take a moment to synthesize the main idea of what we just read. And I think this helps really make sure that we've gotten the right comprehension of what we've just read. And it really focuses on what I think is the most important part of the car section or any other section on MCAT, which is reading passages as actively as possible. So the way I'm going to do this is give us all a second to read each paragraph and come up with our own um, main idea. And you can go ahead and pause the video while you do that um, for each paragraph on your own. And then unpause when you're ready to check in to see if you got the right sort of main idea for each uh, paragraph. So right now go ahead and pause the video and read, highlight, uh, whatever you want to do for the first paragraph and sort of come up with uh, a main idea for it. Okay, hopefully everyone has come up with uh, a synthesized main idea. If you kind of thought that the first paragraph was really talking about how the Roman Empire was very strong, it had all these really cool things like sovereignty, um, a free constitution, etc. If that was kind of along the lines of what you perceive as the main idea of the first paragraph, then awesome. Um, now I'll give everyone a second to read the second paragraph and then we'll come back to the main idea. Okay, um, so this second paragraph was really kind of pursuing the history of Rome even further and talking about how there was this happy period until there was a huge decline after this guy Antoninus died. So if that's kind of what you got from the second paragraph, then awesome job. Um, okay, go ahead and pause and read the third paragraph. Okay, so this third paragraph here, we're really talking about how um, the first seven uh, centuries of Roman history was uh, characterized by a lot of intense conquering. We saw words like rapid succession of triumphs, um, but then we see this new name introduced, Augustus, and the important thing about Augustus is that he seemed to sort of go back on that, um, that trend and instead introduced this spirit of moderation, which means he probably wasn't doing as much conquering. Okay, um, go ahead and pause and read the next paragraph. Okay, so uh, reconvening now, again, we, were, we just read a paragraph about how Augustus introduced a spirit of moderation and didn't do that much conquering. However, this paragraph was all about how there was one important conquest, which was the conquest of the British province. And um, we're also reading that there were a lot of really cool things about Britain that made it a really appealing thing to conquer. So we see things like pearl fisheries, proximity to Gaul, which probably had some historical significance. Um, just basically lots of reasons why Rome would want to conquer Britain. Um, again, it looks like we're just kind of flowing through the history of Rome. Um, okay, go ahead and pause and take a look at the next paragraph. Okay, so this paragraph really sort of dives deep into the conquest of Britain specifically. It looks like the first part of the paragraph is really highlighting a lot of their weaknesses. We see words like savage fierceness, um, valor without conduct, uh, love of freedom, but no spirit of union. So these look like all reasons why Rome was able to conquer them in the first place. Okay, go ahead and pause and take a look at the final paragraph. Okay, so now we are looking at um, someone named Agricola, and this paragraph looks uh, like it's all about his conquest of Ireland. And I think two main takeaways of uh, this paragraph, in addition to what I just said, were um, why did Agricola decide to take over Ireland? It looks like there's an easy takeover, but why did he do that? And the two main reasons it looks like, A, were to um, make this Western Isle that he conquered even more valuable. So I guess adding Ireland to the list of conquests um, made the British conquest even more valuable. And it looks like the second thing, which is kind of referenced in the last sentence, is to make the British more okay with being subjugated, because I guess Ireland was like their one hope of freedom, but now that they see Ireland conquered, they have no hope of freedom, and so they're more likely to just accept their fate as subjugated people. Okay, great job. This was a long historical passage, but hopefully um, we were able to synthesize some main ideas from it. I like to usually pause at the end of reading the entire passages too, just to sort of make sure um, I got all my thoughts in order and I, I did comprehend the main idea and the main 
um, what I perceive to be the purpose of the passage and the tone of everything before I get into the questions. Um, so with that being said, let's now get into the questions and test our comprehension. Okay, so let's start with number one. The author implies that the British tribes were defeated because why? So strong word defeated. Um, if I had to guess where in the passage this would be, I guess it would be in the paragraph where they talked about Britain's weaknesses. And this is why it's really important when you're making a mini outline to kind of maintain your passage orientation because when you get a question like this, you want to be able to go back to the passage pretty quickly um, and not spend too much time looking for an answer like this. So I, I made my mini outline so I know exactly where to look. I'm gonna look in the paragraph about Britain's weaknesses right here. And I'm gonna highlight some keywords I think are important. So they had valor, but no conduct. They had a love of freedom, but they had no spirit of union. So that means they were not very unified. They took up arms with savage fierceness. Maybe they just weren't skilled fighters. Um, they were turned against each other. They were inconsistent. Um, they were successively subdued. Okay, I have lots of textual evidence to go off of. So now let's look at the answer choices and see which ones these uh, sentences support. Okay, they fought together. Did they fight together? I don't think so. It says they lacked a spirit of union. If they fought together, they would probably have a pretty uh, intense spirit of union. So I'm going to go ahead and eliminate A. They fought for freedom. That does seem like something you would be doing when someone is trying to conquer you. You'd be fighting for your freedom. Um, and it did, does talk about how they have a love for freedom. However, I don't necessarily think that would be a reason why they would get defeated. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and eliminate B. They lacked passion. Um, let's see. I don't see the word passion in here. I do see love for freedom, which sounds kind of like passion. Um, however, again, similar to choice B, I don't think that would be a reason that they would be defeated. So I'm going to go ahead and eliminate C, and then I'm left with answer choice D. They did not work together. That does sound like a weakness and kind of in line with what we said earlier, um, but let's just to double check, make sure that we have textual evidence to support it. Here we see right here, they fought without the spirit of union. So they were not very unified. And also they got turned against each other. That probably implies they were not really working that well together. Um, so I'm pretty confident in that answer choice. Okay, number two. If true, which of the following statements would most strongly challenge the author's claims about Agricola's strategy for the conquest of Ireland? Okay, so we see the name Agricola. So I remember reading about Agricola in the last paragraph. So that's probably where I'd want to look if I wanted to find some textual evidence. But first, let's try to figure out what the question's asking. So we're looking for something that would challenge the author's claim. So let's make sure we're looking for a, a challenger. Um, and now let's ask ourselves, what even is the author's claim? So what did the author claim about why Agricola conquered Ireland? And we actually kind of discussed this in our passage outline. Remember, we talked about how Agricola conquered Ireland for two reasons. The first was to turn the Western Isle into a valuable possession. So um, just sort of add to the value of conquering Britain. And the second was to force the British to wear their chains with less reluctance, which was basic, which basically, in other words, means to demoralize the British by taking away any hope of freedom they had. Um, so here we have two things that we know the author claimed. Let's look at the answer choices and see which one would challenge either of those two. So A, the prospect of freedom had already been removed from Ireland before Agricola's conquest. Okay, so if the prospect of freedom had already been removed, then theoretically the argument about um, demoralizing the British would be null, right? Because the only reason the British were hopeful was because they had a prospect of freedom in Ireland. But if that was taken away, then there would be no reason to further demoralize them by doing that. So already this is kind of a compelling answer choice. Um, Agricola was well regarded by the Roman government. This may or may not be true. However, after rereading that paragraph, I just don't see any textual evidence discussing his uh, his respect from the government really at all. So this one is kind of out of scope of what we're looking for, and I'm going to go ahead and eliminate it. Agricola's ideas were not supported by other military generals at the time. Again, reading this paragraph about Agricola, um, we do see this word, this phrase, in his opinion. However, I don't think we see a lot of information about um, what, what other military generals thought about him. So again, I'm going to say C is a little bit out of scope. The conquest of Britain took far longer than anticipated. Okay, so here we're talking about the conquest of Britain, so we might have to go up a paragraph where they talked about that. 
But again, if we're looking at this, I don't really see a lot of information about how long the conquest of Britain took. Um, and even if the conquest of Britain took a long time, I'm not sure that would really dissuade any of these points um, that the author made about why Agricola conquered Ireland. So I'm going to go ahead and eliminate D as well. Um, and we already decided A was a compelling answer, so with that and process of elimination, I feel confident picking it. Okay. Next, let's look at number three. The passage suggests that Augustus attempted to do which of the following during his rule? Okay, Augustus. I'm remembering that name. We put that in our passage outline. So now let's find the paragraph that we talked specifically about Augustus. And if I'm remembering correctly, that was right here, Augustus. Okay, so in the passage, just like textual evidence, we see he relinquished the ambitious design of subduing the whole earth. So he kind of gave up the uh, whole master plan of just doing a bunch of conquering. And he introduced a spirit of moderation. Okay, so basically he wasn't doing as much conquering, and that's kind of what we decided in our summary as well. So let's look at these choices. Which did he do during his rule? Increase colonial territories. Um, that's kind of directly contrasting to what we just talked about, so I'm going to go ahead and eliminate that. Support Agricola's quest for Britain. I do remember reading about Agricola, but let's be careful not to connect dots that aren't supposed to be connected. Um, Agricola wasn't really talked about until much later. Um, and I don't think Augustus and him were even really around during the same time frame. They were not leading at the same time. So I'm going to go ahead and eliminate that one. Moderate Rome's imperialistic quests. Okay, I like that the word moderate is in here because that was also in the passage. Uh, careful though, because sometimes like the AMC will use the exact phrases that were in the passage, but in different contexts to try to trick you. So anytime you see like exact verbiage, just make sure it's, it's being used in the right context. In this case, it looks like it is. Moderate Rome's imperialistic quest, that kind of does sound exactly like the sentence from the passage. So I'm going to go ahead and circle that one for now, and then just to confirm, did he pursue new accessions? No. This is kind of similar to answer choice A. And when two choices are so similar, they're usually both wrong. Um, again, this is also wrong because we know that Augustus was not doing very much conquering. So I'm going to go with C. Okay, lastly. Which of the following statements is inconsistent with information in the passage? Okay, so we're going to have to read each of these statements and see how they relate to information presented in the passage. Okay, first, Britain was conquered in order to recognize the Roman Empire's past. Um, okay, right off the bat, I'm not really remembering a lot of information about recognizing the Roman Empire's past. I guess there was a lot of information about the Roman Empire's history um, so I'm going to leave that one for now and come back to it. Rome primarily conquered other countries while being governed as a republic. Okay, is this inconsistent? If we look at the passage, we do see this sentence here. The principal, conque the principal conquests of the Romans were achieved under the republic. Okay, that's pretty much what this answer choice is. So this is not inconsistent. This is very much consistent. In fact, it's explicitly stated. Practical considerations were attractive for the Roman Empire's conquest of Britain. Okay, so this is basically, why did the Roman Empire conquer Britain? We did talk about that in our passage outline, and that was in paragraph two, three, four. Um, and we did talk about how Britain was pleasing because it was proximal to Gaul, it had a pearl fishery, it was in, viewed in the light of a distinct and insulated world. Those sound like pretty practical considerations, so I would say this choice is pretty consistent. Um, for the Roman Empire's conquest of Britain. And then finally, Agricola attacked Ireland for the purpose of reducing morale in Britain. We've talked a lot about Agricola during these questions, and I think it's safe to say that um, he did, in fact, attack Ireland for the purpose of reducing morale in Britain. If we want to find some textual evidence, we can see that um, this last sentence here, um, he conquered Ireland so that the Britons would wear their chains with less reluctance if the prospect of freedom was removed. So that makes sense. If they had no chance of freedom um, with Ireland being gone, then they would be more okay with their status as subjugated people. And they would definitely be demoralized. Um, so that makes sense. That's consistent. So now we're back with A. Britain was conquered in order to recognize the Roman Empire's past. We had a lot of reasons why Britain was conquered, but recognizing the Roman Empire's past was not really one of those reasons. Um, it may or may not be true, but it does seem inconsistent with what was presented. It seemed like Britain's conquest was an entirely practical decision. So I'm going to go ahead and go with A for this particular choice, for this particular question. 
Okay. Thank you guys so much for following along. I hope that um, I was able to share some helpful insight in terms of walking through CARS passages and strategies and questions. Um, if you have any questions about the way I answered some of these or the way I walked through this passage, please feel free to email me. Um, but otherwise, good luck and happy studying.